This is Daniel Poppy, host of How to Write Good. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hey, it's Baxter Colburn here from Public House Media. Did you know that we just added a store here at Public House Media? No, I'm not talking about a grocery store where you can go buy apples or bananas or peanut butter, which are all fantastic, especially when peanut butter's on all of those. Anyway, we've added a store here at Public House Media so you can not only come and represent your favorite podcast network, but also represent your favorite shows as well, too. Just go over to phmedia.com. And look in the top right corner where you'll see the, the button that says store. Click on that and you can search through all of our great products. Or if you go to our Facebook page, Public House Media, you can see on the left-hand side a tab that says store. All of our products are listed there as well, too. It's the new Public House Media store. You don't want to miss it. It is fantastic. Buy some of that great swag to support your favorite shows and to support Public House Media. Check it out today. This is Kim Meyer, the host of Choose to Rise here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Choose to Rise, where we talk about living with positive mindsets, how to increase our confidence, building our faith, and living out our life on purpose. A new show comes out via podcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And if you want to catch the episode live instead, stop by Public House Media around 645 Central Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you'll never miss an episode of Choose to Rise. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. You hear that? Of course you did. I put it in on the audio software and pushed up the sound decibel so that you could hear it. But that's not really the point. That sound started at about 11 o'clock two Thursdays ago, but it actually had been going on for the last... 10 years of my life. On my ninth birthday, I went to see Iron Man. May 2nd, 2008 was the day the MCU started. A little film with Robert Downey Jr. and the director from Swingers, which seemed like a huge gamble, became a smash hit. I don't remember much from the screening. Honestly, I only remember the final fight and the attractive flight attendants dancing on Stark's private jet. I was nine. Sue me. As the MCU progressed, there always was a sense of building up to something. Often the movies were formulaic, but enjoyable. It all was leading to something. The characters were going down certain pathways to lead them to their destiny on April 27th, 2018. I saw Avengers Infinity War to celebrate my 19th birthday that day. I probably should have grown out of the MCU, but I'm a man-child with Hulk hands in my dorm room. I don't know what you expect from me. So, how does it fare? Is this what we've been waiting for? Is this the epic film that it markets itself as? Does Thanos rip off his face to reveal that he was Stan Lee the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. Sorry. Let's find out on this episode of... Cinema Stories. If you're new to this channel and you don't know what we quite do here, hither, 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 here. Nicholas Cage, you got that beat? Yes, Sam, we do. I'm about to drop that beat. Are you gonna go hard on that beat, Sam? You're gonna go hard? I promise you, that impression will never get better. Um, um, here on the show, we talk the latest movie and TV news and reviews. Thank you so much, Nicholas Cage. We're brought to you by the lovely Public House Media. Check out the new PH Media store. Get Cinema Stories merchandise. What are you doing? You need two stops. <laughs> tube socks. You need tube socks. I don't know who does, but get Cinema Stories tube socks. Tube socks. To play, share, and download on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, and Google Play. So yeah, this is my fourth MCU review, and the most important because I've done three before. Pretty uneven, unbalanced number, but with this, it'll be even. One could say balance. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. I'm sorry, we're uh, off the rails already. I'll get back on them. Hopefully. Alright, no more delay. 
No more stretched bad jokes. No more Nicolas Cage impressions. It's obvious why we are here. This is my review of Avengers Infinity War. And this will have details and spoilers about the movie. You've had a week to see it, people. I assume if you were going to see it, you saw it already. Now I'm not going to go with the whole, there are five aspects of filmmaking to consider when you're cooking a quesadilla at 450 degrees. It's a strange movie that you can't really judge that way, oddly enough. So, let's have an open discussion. Guys. Guys. Thanos is here, and he's wrecking house, yo! The plot follows Thanos, an intergalactic purple monster only equal to Barney the Dinosaur in cinematic history. In an attempt to save the universe from overpopulation and the horrific things that can come from it, Thanos plans to attain the Infinity Stones, six all-powerful intergalactic stones forged at the beginning of time that can pretty much lay waste to everything. Along the way, the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy break off and team up to stop Thanos. Now, I worded that intro like that for a specific reason. Because... I know it's been said, comment section, but hold on. Do do podcasts have comment sections? Oh 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 my gosh! Where am I? What's the meaning of life? This is really Thanos's movie, and it's a nice change of pace for the MCU. There are people who are bound to say, Well, this is not a complete film. There's no development for the protagonists. The plot is thin. All of that may be kind of true, but there are some key flaws with that. First off, if you look at this from Thanos' point of view, it's a hero's journey. And it's a complete one at that. He experienced on his planet what he's trying to prevent for the rest of the universe. Is it bad that at a certain point in the movie, I'm like, so I'm against the whole murder half of everyone thing, but he raises some valid points. Hmm. Let him proceed. Which is tough. They kill off Heimdall and Loki in the first five minutes. I love Heimdall and Loki. And the way Loki dies, too. The next snap, his his bulging eyes, his lifeless body. Settle down, Feige. These are kids' movies. You're not Martin Scorsese. Seriously, though, that opening scene. What a way to establish such a dour tone. There's comedy in this film for sure, and it hits hard. I've seen the movie multiple times. I crack up at each line. It's odd because there's such a dramatic shift in tones within the scenes, and it shouldn't work at all, but oddly it does. I've read a lot of reviews that there's not much character development, and the story is pretty weak. But you don't need that. You don't need freaking Casablanca here. You understand where these characters are coming from because you've seen their arcs throughout 19 movies. You don't get complete arcs, you get choices and decisions from previously developed characters. It gives the movie a really epic feel, with more stakes as you feel their decisions have actual impact. When Star-Lord punches Thanos in the face, causing the good guys to lose their upper hand, you're like, Star-Lord... Uh, I'm definitely pissed at you, but we saw you lose your mother, we saw you painfully, and finally accept Gamora as a caring person in your life when she asked for your hand in the first Guardians. We saw you lose your father figure and grow with Gamora through it, so when you find out that she got thrown off a cliff, you punch that mother sucker in the face! And that Soul Stone scene too, with Red Skull? Like, like what? It's moments like these where you're like, Was this the plan the whole time? And Kevin Feige's like, yes, exactly. You see, Red Skull, he's the key to all of this. He's a funnier character than we've had before, but if we get him working... Saying that about a Nazi. That's uh, that's where we are. 
Anywho, that was by far one of the best sequences in the entire film. From a visual standpoint, the landscape is strange yet beautiful. It has that legendary fantasy feel, and even though you see it coming, seeing Thanos turn around slowly with that tear running down his face after realizing that he has to kill his adoptive daughter? It's messed up. It adds layers to that relationship and makes Thanos a more interesting villain. He oddly cares about people's lives. He has emotions, he has a conviction that he is doing the right thing, and he does all he can to achieve it. That genocidal goal is kind of respectable. And that has to be, ding ding dong, the second worst thing that I have ever said. Let's see the worst thing, Jack. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, oh, that, okay. Yeah, so actually there's this joke where... And that's why they're called the Aristocrats. Oddly, I hope that people get and don't get that joke at the same time. Thanos. One of the best villains we've seen from Marvel. Complex emotions, intimidating as ever. I was honestly scared of Thanos. Every movement is so deliberate, and he's jovial and kind, but a massive purple psychopath will kill you like that. He has to make one of the hardest decisions, which costs him everything. Side talk, that final vision of little Gamora, that was chilling. There is a heavy theme of making these decisions and doing what has to be done for the greater good. Scarlet Witch envisioned on whether to kill the one she loves to save half the universe. Star-Lord stalls and fails to shoot Gamora to save the location of the Soul Stone. Gamora decides to give up the Soul Stone to save Nebula from torture. Doctor Strange makes the decision to give up the Time Stone. Loki gives up the Space Stone to spare Thor. Each of these characters makes the decision to save the ones they love, and in the end, it ends up destroying half of everyone. Those are some heavy things to think about. Is it worth doing the right thing for someone you love, or are the consequences down the line more important? The only one who makes the hard decision is Thanos, and he wins. There are some heady themes for a superhero film that's being called dumb schlock. Like I say, love what you love, hate what you hate, everyone has their reasons for it. But you can't drop the hate on a franchise for a minute to look into some deeper themes, some smarter themes being addressed, then maybe, just maybe you need to take a break from watching your 90 minute expression upon nihilism from the perspective of a tree to check yourself. There are great characterization moments in here. I love everything with Star-Lord. Unfortunately, I relate to Star-Lord a lot in these movies. I'm not sure what that says about me. Maybe it's because he's Chris Pratt and he used to be fat and now he's ripped. And I'd love to do that. And I'm in fat stage still, so... Yeah. But anyway, at the end of his confrontation with Thanos... He's just a broken guy. Thor is great here. I realize now that the shift of tone in Thor Ragnarok gelled him better into this movie where he primarily interacts with the Guardians, which I find really interesting. The conceit of the Guardians movies is that these are terrible people who have lost a ton but find love and family while laughing and listening to music through the pain. Thor is an honorable hero, but he's lost everything. He smiles through it, though. His arc here was great. Thor is a prideful guy. He's vested thousands of warriors. He swears to bring vengeance upon Thanos. Instead of aiming for the head, he hits Thanos in the chest with his battle axe to get those final words in. And in the end, it causes them to lose. Like I said, it's a movie about decisions. And that scene with Thor and Rocket on the ship where Hemsworth is crying? That's a spectacular character moment. It's also great from Rocket's perspective, after growing as a more caring character in Guardians 2. I don't like how Thor gets his eye back, though. I enjoyed that thematic element in Ragnarok, which kind of leaves it null and void, like Thor had to lose his eye to see the whole picture. Also, I believe that Valkyrie and Korg are still alive, 
Hashtag Korg forever. Hashtag Korg wars. Hashtag Korg solo movie. Thor says that half of Asgard was dead, meaning half of them are alive. Two plus two there. And in the end, Thanos wins. Half of the Avengers are dead. Now, the MCU gets a lot of flack for not doing anything different. They have a specific formula, it works for them, they stick with it. I love the MCU, and I think they do really interesting things and tackle heady themes in that format. But they stick to the format. This film is a lot different. It doesn't have your typical narrative thrust, because we're not doing the -the over-the-top Shakespearean complete character work. This is a climax to a long-running TV series. Wouldn't it have just been great in Breaking Bad when Walter is setting up Gus that in that moment, they both experience heartwarming character arcs? No! We want to see Gus blow up. And they had the Kahongas to let Thanos win. The last scene at his little cottage where the sun rises like Thanos said earlier? What an eerie dark ending, especially with half of the Avengers dying. They really took a lot of risks with this movie, painting Thanos as this oddly charming menacing force, making us question what would be the best thing to do in these awful scenarios. This is Thanos' universe, we're just living in it. Like I said, half of the universe, including the Avengers, fade to dust. In a silent, disturbing scene, Scarlet Witch... All of the Guardians besides Rocket, Spider-Man, Black Panther, Falcon, Doctor Strange, all gone. (laughs) Can you imagine the nine-year-olds walking out of the theater? (gasps) Dad! Dad! Is Spidey really gone? Yes, he's gone. No more Marvel movies for you, it's over. Back to the coal mines with you. Yeah! I would be a great parent. Now, you know that these characters are all coming back. I hear people say, It removes all of the stakes! We know they're coming back! Stupid, stupid, stupid. Unsubscribe, never coming back. Here's what I say to that ridiculous notion. The stakes aren't gone because people who we know may come back died. In the context of the film, Thanos is such a menacing force, we tremble in fear when we see him. We know what's at stake, who Thanos actually kills, like Loki and Heimdall. The stakes are there throughout. Now I have a theory that doesn't make the end of this film stakeless. Is that a word? Yeah, sure. Um, All of the Avengers who remain are the originals from Avengers 1, most of them whose contracts are up. Tony, Cap, Widow, didn't get a lot of arc in this movie. My theory is that because of Doctor Strange's sacrifice, which we'll talk about in a minute, the way the universe worked, the butterfly effect allowed those Avengers to die. My theory is that the way it shook out, the originals may have to sacrifice themselves and make the ultimate hero sacrifice. This could bring great closure to Tony and Cap's relationship and the rest of the originals who we love. Plus, thematically, it works since they'll actually be avenging something. Plus, from character standpoints, it would be a great end to all their characters to make that final decision. There will still be stakes and lasting consequences this way. Marvel wouldn't want to disappoint fans of this darker move. I think people miss the point of these deaths. Obviously, they're not going to die. The point of these deaths are to break the characters who stayed alive. Bucky, Cap's best friend, he's risked everything for him. Gone. Peter Parker, Tony Stark's son figure. Gone. Groot and the Guardians. Rocket's only family. Gone. The character deaths are meant to thrust forward the arcs of the other characters. They work as emotional deaths for sure, but it's more than that. They are the fuel that will drive the original Avengers to see where their characters need to be to fulfill their arcs. Thus, their deaths will still carry that weight, affecting the future Avengers team who is deeply tied to the characters. The way I see it, 
Marvel has a plan. They've played to the fans' interest for years. They're not going to drop the ball that bad in the final chapter of their book. Honestly, this movie just really worked for me. I've heard complaints and quote-unquote plot holes being forced out, but they usually aren't really plot holes. It's like questioning why Doctor Strange allowed the fight to continue with Thanos. Well, everything in this scenario had to play out a certain way, so of course he wouldn't want to change anything that would cause a shift in the endgame. It's like critiquing Back to the Future's time travel elements. That's not what it's about. The characters fit so well into the film for the fact alone that it has so many characters. The plot is a little thin, Thanos trying to get the stones and the Avengers doing their best to stop him, but the character moments and desperation and the overall execution of the film are what makes it supersede the thin plot. Does it work on its own? No! Does it work as the climax to an epic story? Yeah. You have to be invested in these characters and the universe to truly see this film in all of its potential. This movie is not for the average movie-going audience. It's like watching Return of the King without seeing the first two Lord of the Rings. It's really hard to analyze this film like an average standalone movie because it isn't. It's hard not to analyze this film without being super, ooper, duper fanatic about it. Focusing on Thanos was the right move. Focusing on the connection and choices of the characters was a smart move. So yeah, I love Avengers Infinity War. This film is by no means perfect. Some of the pacing is uneven. A few characters should have had a little more to do. But the film works so well. Thanos, the focal point, is an empathetic calm yet intimidating villain that makes audiences and characters tremble. The character work and themes are subtle, yet they push forward the mythos and the character's pathos. The Russo brothers succeed in the daunting task of Avengers Infinity War, showing respect to each of its characters, providing nuanced character moments, spectacular action, great visuals, and finally subverting the Marvel formula for a genuinely chilling conclusion. I'd give Avengers Infinity War 4.4 out of 5. Like I said, this film may have not played out well for everyone, yet being a true fan of these characters and seeing them in a movie like no other, big props to the Russos. Enough of me praising the ever-living life out of Avengers Infinity War, let's move to today's segment of Cinema Stories. We talk the latest in television and f f f f film Leading off, getting away from the Avengers... Avengers Infinity War has mother of goodness! Avengers Infinity War, no matter how you feel about it on a quality level, is a box office phenomenon. The film soars to the highest opening weekend of all time globally and domestically at $258.1 million in a week. The film passed $800. In a week, the film passed the total box office of films such as Justice League, Guardians of the Galaxy, Deadpool, etc. That is ridiculous. We may be seeing one of the biggest box office hits of all time, folks. Thanos definitely demands your money. In news away from Infinity War, Avengers Infinity War... <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. According to Variety.com, Jeffrey Tambor of Arrested Development fame is set to return to the iconic comedy series' fifth season. Now, Tambor has been accused of sexual misconduct over recent months, which has caused many to be surprised by his return. Co-stars voice that they stand with Tambor. Tambor helped make Arrested Development one of the most eccentrically dark, hilarious comedy series of all time. No matter how you feel about it, it seems as though the head of the Bluth family is back for season 5. Finally, according to Deadline Hollywood, advanced ticket sales for Solo, a Star Wars story, have surpassed that of Black Panther. Remember that little, indie, low-budget movie? The one that's made a billion-plus dollars and is still in theaters? Yeah, that Black Panther. 
This comes as a genuine surprise to me. I never was super off the wall excited for a solo solo film, and many other people felt that way. There's so much to do in the Star Wars universe, and you want to go down this route? Obviously, many do not share that opinion. Over the four-day memorial weekend, it is set to make $170 million, much higher than I anticipated. It seems as though this solo movie will be much more than a solo home run, but a grand slam. Clever jokes? I got them. And that will do it for this episode of Cinema Stories. I know you may be wondering, Sam, Sam, where's the feedback portion of the show? What are you doing? Honestly, I had so much fun writing about Infinity War, time got way away from me. So depending on this week, I'll devote a larger portion of the next episode to your guys' reaction to Infinity War. Make sure to download, share, and play on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. Please, like us. <laughs> that sounded desperate. Like, please like me. I just want to be accepted. I hate myself. <sighs> Dark again. You'd be a great parent. Well, um, Infinity War. So, it makes sense. Check out Public House Media, their new website with all new gear you can get. Cinema stories, tube socks, yes, just do it. If you want to talk about Infinity War, give me feedback on my show, or just talk about your feelings. I'm always down for a late night walk on the beach, or a comment or message will suffice. Thank you guys so much for listening today. Avengers Infinity War. A cinematic experience unparalleled in my lifetime. I said it. I said it, haters. At me. Please, at me. I ate haters for breakfast. Every moment was like a ticking clock. A heart-stopping pressure bursting from our chests. And when that clock finally stopped with that snap, the theater fell silent. And now that clock begins again to next year. When I turned 20 years old. So much can change in that time. I could be a vegetarian. Who knows? I could be working on my first feature. I could have multiple podcasts. I could have no podcasts. Time goes fast. Time changes people. Time affects our decisions. Who knows what will happen? The MCU? I spent my life with it. And through the good and the bad... Watching Infinity War, getting goosebumps, audibly yelling heck yeah, made me see that now. It's a pretty great time to be a movie fan. Bye guys.